like to live with family after marriage? No, not really. All right. That's partly why I want to get married, so I can move out. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Love is being soulmates, really. In Islam, marriage is a fundamental part of a Muslim's life. It is widely accepted across all schools of thought that getting married is half your faith. Half your religion if you marry, and that is a huge thing that my parents also believe in. However, for Muslims, finding a life partner in Britain isn't the easiest of tasks, especially when you are observing the faith while searching. To find someone that you physically, mentally and emotionally connect with is so difficult. Twelve wonderful people have agreed to embark on a unique journey with us, not only to share their experiences and struggles in finding a life partner, but also to learn new things about themselves along the way. I feel that I'm ready now to share my life with someone. I just hope that it happens one day. If I was to meet someone else, I'd probably take it very, very slow. Does marriage being seen as more of a religious duty distort one's judgement in seeking a life partner? I think you say you're looking for a wife, but I don't think you are looking for a wife. With divorce always being a risk, could some be about to make the same mistakes again? Don't look for someone who's like you. Look for someone who's going to compliment you. This journey isn't about matchmaking. It's an insight into how 12 British Muslims are dealing with the struggles of trying to complete half their faith. I'm not paralyzed, so mashallah, Allah has given me every, every, um, every component to live a normal life. Um, and that includes the physical side, the mental side, every side really. So again, you've got to explore the person. For me, I would never want to get married to someone who is pressurized into getting married to me. Everyone has a right to love someone and be loved in return. So I've always said to my family that if I'm getting married, you have to ask the girl first that she is comfortable with marrying me. Others believe that one day they will almost certainly find that special person and simply have to wait for fate to catch up. Some people have a vision of what that special person may look like. Beautiful to our eyes, perfectly formed, gorgeous smile. Everybody's looking for their ideal and obviously when they come somewhere across like me, clearly visually, I'm not ideal. But would our vision of love be inclusive enough for this beautiful person to have a disability? I'm not physically able, one, two, I'm not six foot or whatever. I'm far from the norm as, 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 as in one's uh, search, but I think if they got to know me as a person, then I think there's more layers to me than just that. Hello everybody, won't you listen to me? I'm gonna tell you about disability. A man's got a heart, a soul and a brain. Hey, you and me, man, we're just the same. So look at me and not my chair. You look at me like I'm not there. So what is it that stops you seeing in this chair is a human being. Disabilities are nothing new. In a world full of rainbows, there's more black than blue. No wheelchair access, this world full of darkness. Make me a ramp so I can turn on the lamp to see life in a new light. My name is Jamil Khan. Meet Jamil, who is 38 and originally from Burnley, but now resides in Sunderland. I originally came here to do my degree and I've since stayed and 18 years later I'm still here. Yahoo! He's funny, intelligent. In some summers we travelled. Independent. I've lived by myself for 18 years. He studied computer science and is a sportsman. It's a, it's a wheelchair football. It's, it's played in an electric wheelchair. So you have a goalkeeper and three forward players. I went to the very first Powerchair Football World Cup. I was quite honoured to be the first British Pakistani uh, to be captain of England, be chosen amongst eight people to be the captain. So that was a very proud moment for me. I went all the way to Japan, which was a, an amazing experience in itself. Met all different disabilities from all over the world, which was amazing. The purpose, I think, for me was the self-achievement that I've come from nothing with hardly any support to getting so far and also be accepted for who I am rather than say my colour or my disability or anything like that. So I think just to be getting somewhere on merit, I think that was very important. He is looking for love and wants to share his life with a special someone. Loyalty and, and I think for me marriage is for life. I think I think you can do things, you know, like the normal way, but I, I like to do them halal way, so it's marriage for me. When I do get married, it's for life. So I feel like the most 
protecting his loyalty and being and being faithful and stuff like that is most important in a marriage and working through your ups and downs. My ideal partner would would have the characteristics of being humble, uh, down to earth, bubbly, a nice human being who who doesn't see differences but sees the good in people. You know, we're all Muslims, and I think we should all accept each other for who we are. It's not about just getting married though, it's about meeting the right person who sees past your disability, who's comfortable with your disability. I'm quite far away from the communities uh, where generally British Pakistani communities are based. Due to there not being many prospects in his locality, Jamil is very active online in his search for a marriage partner. I think online, I think it's mainly one of shock, I assume, even though I can't see their faces. And a lot of it, it's again through education they haven't been educated to meet someone like myself but when they meet me in person um, it's the fact that they just totally forget because basically my personality and that comes across and I'm very bubbly and talkative so yeah so basically in person I've never had a problem with anybody but I think online because it's behind a computer I think a lot of a lot of people feel like they can't see past it. Searching online is his main vehicle in finding a marriage partner. That's why initially I went on was the pure fact that if someone, if I was to meet someone, would be for meeting me rather than my disability, you know. So that would be the biggest, biggest bonus for me is to meet someone that sees me for me. So matchmaker Adeem is reviewing his profile. It appears he does have a strong profile. I met you, Mashallah. You're a great guy. You've got a, a wealth of experience. I went canoeing in the Tyne River. Went like camping, just meeting different people from different walks of lives, and you got so much going for you. Joined the Islamic Society. You know, so kept Islam very much close to my heart. And I think you really would make a, an amazing husband for somebody. Jamil is also very active and has a very specific skill. So here we are, we have arrived at the beach. Now I'm going to take my wheelchair out. So I've mastered this technique, now the box is thinking I'm opening my wheelchair. Due to this physical disability, he is unable to walk. I mean, shall I, if I met someone in the future, so that's where we'd probably come. Enjoy, enjoy little walks. It's not a problem pushing myself. I see life a lot of the time in positive ways. In the summer, just come and just relax, enjoy the fresh air. Islam is peace, that's what it means. So I'm a person that seeks peace, seeks friendship with different people, you can hear the waves. That gives you like uh, tranquility in your mind. So it switches you off from all the, the worldly needs of a human being. I think I like to see the world a bit more peaceful. We should be open-minded. Our culture, Pakistani culture, doesn't allow that. I think it's very narrow-minded in the sense of it sort of stigmatizes disability. And At times, he has had to deal with very difficult treatment from others. They're never seeing you as a human being, never seeing you as a person. They're always seeing you as a person with a disability. So it should be the other way around. They should see the person first. And, and get to know the person and then decide for themselves whether that person is right for them. But initially they're seeing the disability or, or thinking that I've got a disability, so therefore let's just dismiss this person straight away without even, even giving him a second chance. So. Jamil says his community has not been as accepting of his disability. They're very negative towards um, sort of like understanding one's needs. The problems comes when I do talk to someone. They turn around and say, well, my parents not agreeing to it because you've got a disability or whatever. A lot of people feel like they can't see past it and it's always come back as a no because, like I said, they can't understand how someone would want to marry a, a person with a disability because they, they assume their disability is someone who should just wait for death, basically. Despite living alone, he feels the time is right to meet someone. Non-Muslim friends who have recently got married who are wheelchair users and have married an able-bodied person and and again, if they love them and they feel happy with them, all great. But for me, I wouldn't accept someone just because I'm on my own. I would only accept someone who we felt compatible. For me, it's, it's working together and, and learning together and growing together. So for me, I'm, I'm, as I don't want to be judged, I don't want to judge anybody. So for me, that person can be of any level in their, in their religion, religious terms. Will Jamil find someone special who will enable him to complete half his faith. Inshallah, yeah, of course. Islam gives you that. It gives you faith, it gives you hope. So, as the great man said, um, Stephen Hawkins, where there's life, there's hope, and I, I firmly believe that.
for me is mainly to make someone else someone else happy and knowing that I make someone else happy for, for, for who they are. And I think that's what life's about, is always to give it your best. And if you're giving it your best and you don't succeed, then at least you've tried. And that's, that's the one regret I will never have, is not trying. So. Jamil has the right to be loved and is sincere in his search. I'm very romantic, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm a very romantic person. When it comes to songs and stuff like that, I've always liked romantic songs. And I've, as I've grew older, I realise, yeah, I've got like a big, big romantic, big romantic heart in me. I have like a romantic weekend away to like some like Venice, one of the romantic places. I think I think I'm more of a giver than a receiver, so I think I think I, I would I would more than likely be be giving rather than receiving. So I think I think the most romantic thing someone can do is be accepting, be accepting of who I am. I really like the way you've wrapped your hijab in your profile picture. Jazakallah, brother. Please don't call me brother. Oh, sorry, mate. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Hey, have you been to Hajj or Umrah? Yeah, I did Umrah a few years ago. It's something I really want to do when you get married, right? Yeah, inshallah. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Little girls may dream of having their own Cinderella story. The dream of finding their prince. But then we grow up and realise this is far from reality. Meet Syra, a 28-year-old single and practicing Muslim from Stoke-on-Trent. I'm a qualified English teacher by profession and I live with my parents at home. She's looking for the perfect man to perfect her faith. Ideally, my, my partner would be practicing at the same level, if not more. To be honest with you, I'm at that stage where personally I wouldn't want to, I'd want to settle down now and I don't want to get into long-term friendships or these emotional attachments and mess my, get my head messed up. Islam is very central to her life, so naturally she wants this in her husband. It would be a really big benefit to me in my life that I had a practicing Muslim who would help me. I wouldn't say essential, but desirable that he's of high caliber in, in the religion. But are there any wider characteristics other than practicing, she wants in a husband. Other things come into play, you know, he should be, inshallah, independent, financially stable. And I think it's very important to have a person who is good-hearted, easygoing, gentle, who won't, makes life easy for you. Finding someone who practices Islam is key to her search, as she feels this will bring her closer to her Lord. I think everybody feels a little bit of pressure at some stage. You know, my parents aren't so strict that they would um, tie me down or force me to do anything. Inshallah, no, it wasn't that to that extent, but it was sometimes like, oh, you need to get married now. But even in our Islamic teachings, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, tie your camel and then put your trust in Allah, which means do whatever you have to do to accomplish something and then Put your trust in God. If it's meant to be, it will happen. Does she have what it takes to handle the responsibilities of a marriage? Or is it simply to fulfill a religious duty? I would love it and I would be really happy if my future spouse was the one that I could kind of, you know, learn the Quran from, for example, or do things with him. He would take the lead, basically, rather than me taking the lead. That would be amazing. But again, that is, that all happens if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it to happen. So ideally I'd want that. However, the minimum requirements that he would be on, on the correct um, aqidah, the, the correct creed of the faith, um, you know, trying to perfect his character. He, I need to see that if he's not so high above, then he has to show to me that he's trying to be and that inshallah will suffice. Will she overlook the inner beauty of someone by focusing entirely on their level of belief?
the religion and the personality, the mannerisms, are both kind of intertwined in one for me. Both of them are very important to me. Um, sometimes I could say that he has to be easygoing, but if he's just easygoing and a nice guy but got no religion at all, I can't do with him. Or if he's really religious and he hasn't got the akhlaq, the mannerisms, then what's the point? I can't live with somebody like that. So they're kind of intertwined for me. Religious practice does not always equate to a successful marriage as people implement the principles wrongly. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't settle for just anybody as well, to be honest. Uh, but then again, living in, in this world, you can't be unrealistic, you have to be practical. It doesn't always work like that. You get people of different levels and abilities. Some people are new, some people who are at the top. Everyone's at different stages. Syra is educated, practicing, independent and family oriented. However, after two years of searching, she's still struggling. I've attended one or two marriage meetings, but most times when I went there, I, I saw most professional Muslims, so people who had high careers and big careers or really into their careers, but with very little spirituality. And therefore there wasn't that, there wasn't that click or there wasn't that you know, it's not always about how good looking you are or what job you've got. It's not about that. It's coming back to the basics again. Um, and therefore, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, I didn't have much, much luck with that. But um, I think maybe a few of them, when I spoke to one, and the first thing he said to me is, I don't pray five times a day. So he kind of immediately knew what my expectations were before even introducing, before saying anything to me. Um, so I know I can come, come across as that, but inshallah, I'm, I'm trying to be open-minded um, as long as there's the minimum requirements met in the religion. Are Syra's strict criterion causing barriers in her search? Internet matchmaker Adeem is looking at Syra's online profile. This is Syra's profile. Uh, wow, what can I say? It's absolutely huge and very, very detailed. The username is Devout Girl, which she so is. She, he's a devout girl, there's no, there's no doubt about that. So she really just summarises that in the first world and her username. And also she's got a, a, a private gallery. So she's got several photographs in a private gallery. Um, and again, I mean, that, that's, that's good because we know she, she wears a niqab and it's, and, it's, and it's there, the fact that she's wearing a niqab and it, the private gallery is there, it makes complete sense. So whoever that she, whoever's interested and whoever she wants to take it forward with, uh, the photographs are there and available. And she also describes the type of person that she's looking for in a lot, a lot of detail as well. She's got this kind of utopia in terms of where she wants to be. She wants to go out and kind of settle in a Middle Eastern country where it's Islamic and she's going to hear the call to prayer, a kind of a relaxed selfie in terms of her orientation. She goes to a lot of uh, religious talks. Her, her kind of passion and her understanding of religion. She talks about her childhood and she talks about her kind of the, the, the past. And she talks a lot about her future as well in terms of what her ideal kind of future is going to be and who that person to complete her faith and to complete her life is going to be like. Okay, so this is one of my local bookshops. I come here quite a bit. And these are some of my favorite books. So this is basically the Arabic alphabet. Um, for the beginners that want to learn, and my nephew's currently learning how to read the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, how are you? You okay? <laughs> Just want this, please. This <laughs> guy There's an event coming up um, soon. We're going to have one in our mosque. It's called the Empowered Woman. So I should be going to that, hopefully. She says that she's a bit relaxed and laid back. But I think in terms of a, a profile, it says anything but, not preachiness, but there's quite a lot of kind of, you know, it wants to be like this, it has to be like this, and it has to be like this. this maybe she's, she's kind of too fairy tale in terms of the person that she's looking for. And I think she may be too kind of focused on Islam as well. She's not getting married to a, a book. She's not getting married to a, a scholar. She's getting married to a person. It's really, really full on in terms of the pack type of person that she's looking for as well. In many ways, the detail is good. And in other ways, I think she's, she's, she's brought the detail in such a way that she's really focused and narrowed, narrowed down designing and manufacturing the type of individual that she's looking for. So a bit of this and a bit of this and a bit of this, and this is exactly the type of person that, 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 that I want. And anything away from that is, is, is gonna be a kind of a big cross and a, a, a no-go. Adeem feels this looks very exhaustive 
and will put people off. The major overall improvement that I'd, I'd suggest for Sarah is kind of just lighten her profile up really. It's very rare for me to say this, but really reduce the description down a little bit and make it a bit more appealing. You know, you're going to have to spend a good 20 minutes to digest what she's wrote here and maybe read it a couple of times before you actually understand who she is. And maybe, you know, three or four times to understand and get a grasp of what she's looking for. And maybe kind of like soften it off a little bit and you know add a little bit more of a personality into that. The nitty gritty detail can come afterwards in a, in a first meeting, in a second meeting uh, with obviously um, a chaperone but what you need to get across in, in your profile is, is a kind of a view of who you are, an overall view of who you are, an overall view of the type of person that you're looking for but you know I really wish her the best luck because she's put a lot of effort into this and I hope that there is, there is somebody out there that can understand her from this and, 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 and get success. Syra is a proud resident of Stoke-on-Trent. She's very much immersed within the Muslim community. I am Imam here in this centre. She's a, a good Muslim sister. She also uh, worked here as a volunteer, like teaching kids, and she travels around all over the Stoke-on-Trent and uh, participates in uh, religious and uh, preaching activities. This is obligatory in Islam that you have to marry because this is natural to have uh, intimate relations and then you continue that marriage and when you want to continue something you have to be very patient and uh, very serious about that relationship. Everybody wants companionship in life. Obviously we don't indulge in relationships outside of marriage. We're not supposed to anyway. Um, therefore, the, the best way is to get married, obviously get to know that person and then make a decision. Love is basically finding a person that you can just share everything with, who is your best friend, your soulmate, um, who you can say absolutely anything to and who will make sacrifices for you that others won't make and not everyone will make. And that's love and that needs to exist, whether it's with your parents your household or whoever and obviously more importantly in the in the husband wife kind of relationship ignoring worldly compatibility is very risky and impractical as there needs to be a balance does Syra realize this assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam hey do you pray yeah alhamdulillah uh what about game of thrones do you watch that no way i've just finished season four Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Sister, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Oh, wow, really? Well, I want to make sure that you go back there in one piece. Mm, inshallah. Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. Sorry, I've got to go to because my, my white friends always say to me, oh, like, how come you don't drink alcohol? And I say, well, I was born, I was born legless, you know what I mean? So I says, mashallah, even though I'm Muslim and I don't drink, you know what I mean? I was already blessed with that experience just by being born, you know, so. We are following 38-year-old Jamil. Just do some YMCA. <laughs> a fun-loving and independent New Age Mackham from Sunderland. Yes. You yeah. being the man that yeah. you are, you know yeah. what I mean, you're, yeah. you're in charge, yeah. right? You're yeah. the man. <laughs> you lead the pack. <laughs> you should always try to improve it the best you can in anything you do, so... I think education has given me a path to be independent. I don't think disability is sort of portrayed in a positive light. I don't think there's many education programs to promote it within kids. I mean, I get a lot of kids coming up to me in town centres, etc., saying, oh, how come you haven't got legs? And depending on their age, if they're quite young, I just tell them I've left them at home. <laughs> he is simply wanting to complete half his faith. For me, it marriages something for life, to grow old together. I like to get out there, meet people. I'm very social, sociable, so I can, I can sort of mix in any environment. The thing annoyed me about my partner, my future partner, 
It's someone that like basically Jekyll Hyde, I don't really know where I am with them and they don't communicate. I can, I've got friends from different backgrounds, uh, Muslims, non-Muslims. Um, I can kind of get on with everybody really. I think that's what the world should be. I think people should be able to get on as human beings instead of having different barriers. The barriers are very, very straightforward in the sense of that they don't see past the shell. So they see the shell and they just make their own judgments, i.e. this person can't do anything for themselves. The basic tasks of say even making a cup of tea or brushing your own teeth or even having a shave. And they just assume even pushing a wheelchair, you know, stuff like that. So it's just all sorts of things that people assume before they even talk to the person or even spent maybe an hour with them to see how they live their life, you know. The more someone portrays the positive, positive side of a disability, I think the more I think it'll be accepted. I mean, it's, it's come a long way in the last year or two in itself uh, from Paralympics being on TV. So I think a lot of people have had their eyes open that yes, we do obviously have barriers with a disability, but they can be overcome with positive mind Jamil feels this community may not be as forthcoming in viewing people with disabilities as marriage potentials. A lot of people judge me because I've got a disability and they assume a lot of things. For example, now I'm driving a car as you can see, and the first question I get asked when I say to someone I drive a car is, have you passed a driving test? Now, of course I've passed my driving test because otherwise I won't be allowed on the road legally. So. So they're the kind of things that you get asked uh, on a regular basis. So I'm very independent in the sense that I can, I can, I can do my own personal hygiene. Um, so shower, shave, etc. Um, I don't mind whatsoever sort of answering questions about my disability. It, it makes me feel good that at least they're interested. So therefore that I can sort of tell them what I can and can't do. I can let them know that yes, we are minority when it comes to a disability, but we shouldn't just be not seen or heard. Obviously, I'm, I'm a wheelchair user because I can't walk, <laughs> as you can see, but other than that, I'm quite mobile and getting out in and out of car and stuff like that. This has left Jamil feeling quietly sad, even though it may not be apparent. When I was growing up, I mean, people get asked questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I never got that question because Presumably they thought I wouldn't amount to much, you know, as a, as a, as a person because I've got a disability. I think it really hit home at 16 when I went to college and I wanted to have what all my friends were going to have, i.e. a career of some sort, drive and be independent is something I strive towards. Education has really played a big part in my life. It's helped me to be who I am today. Yeah, I've been in places where most British lads gonna go and you know be in the shisha places, being out in places where you know you, you mingle with with other people. So I've experienced I've been abroad, you know, so I've experienced all that like every other young young lad in the in the in the past. So mashallah I've been able to to see that, that side of life as well and been been quite quite good with it and quite inspired other people and educated other people just by being there and enjoying myself. So they've enjoyed themselves because they've looked at themselves and thought, oh look at me, I've got all my faculties. Yeah, he's a guy, you know, who hasn't, and he's still enjoying himself, so he's got a smile on his face, you know. He puts on a brave face. But I think there's a lot of people out there that don't get the help or don't have the, don't have the mental capacity to be somebody, just not have that ambition. I've always had that ambition. I think education is very important to, you know, not only educating yourself and doing well for yourself, but also passing that on to other people and other generations to come. And again, that message of being positive about your life. So I'm hoping to maybe one day write a book about my journey, how life is, living with a disability in the real world. Jamil has traveled to Newcastle to meet Halaliwood comedian and director of the American Sharia movie, Omar Reagan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Nice to meet you. I'm doing good. How are you doing, I'm great, doing great. Doing fantastic, mashallah. All right, man. So, hey, welcome. Like, I'm really happy to talk to you about this because, you know, I feel... Yeah, yeah like, we feel the connection. Yeah. yeah, man. We're getting real close. Tell me, what do you, um, you want to get out of marriage? 
Well, first of all, as a Muslim person, it's, it's, it's half of my deen. Uh -huh. So that's obviously the main, the main sort of priority as a, as a Muslim person. Then second of all, it's obviously having a life partner. So going through the ups and downs, the happies, the good times, mainly, hopefully, inshallah. Just doing things, you know, like everybody does, you know, together. So as a, as a, as a husband and wife, yes. um, inshallah, maybe having children in the future. Yeah. Yeah, inshallah, yeah. Maybe going to Hajj pilgrims. All right. Yeah, and mainly the companionship. And so you feel like marriage will get you further in life and help you Inshallah, advance? Inshallah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course, because obviously I would support the woman in, in her dreams uh -huh. and vice versa, you know? So, so I'm looking for that, that saying, that every, after every successful man, there's a successful woman. Yes. So hopefully, we can I maybe, know. maybe... I heard that saying. Yeah, I heard that saying. And, and you look so successful <laughs> already. Right, exactly, but <laughs> mashallah, I need to pretend that then when I've got the woman. But mm -hmm. let me ask you, because people want to know, mm -hmm. do you feel like that you're set in your ways or that you're able to as marriage is like compromising getting to know her get, how do you feel you feel like I, I feel it's a very open field uh, as in obviously the, it's going to be from both sides right. you understand in my particular case it's very unique because I've got a disability yes so obviously she's got to see past that and see the see, see me mm -hmm. and then obviously after that I think it's just it's just game one and hopefully inshallah right. get, get married you know I feel you man. So what's your type Jamil my type. You like tall women, you like short women, you like... I like tall women. Yes? Yeah, yeah, it helps me to get a ladder from being cute and then... Oh, no, yeah. You, you want to look up to her, <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's it, yeah. As long as she don't look down at yeah, you. Yeah, that's know, it, exactly, you, exactly, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask you, mm -hmm. I mean, being a Muslim, like, yeah. a spiritual connection, a spiritual mm -hmm. relationship, do you have, like, rules as far as what you want your wife to be like? Does she wear hijab? Does she doesn't wear hijab? I think Islamically, um, the girl hopefully should know how to sort of be, you know, behave anyway as an Islamic person. Mm -hmm. I'm not that kind of controlling person. As long as they are Islamically within the boundaries of what they're doing. You're not controlling. Mm -hmm. What if she's con kind of controlling? Mm -hmm. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> what if she comes in and be like, Jamil, yeah. I said. I'm like, yeah. Why, how do you feel? Is this the kind of woman for you? If it's very loud, mm. then I'll put some ear, ear in. <laughs> No, on a serious note, right. it's, it's, it's more about communication. Yes. I mean, if they understand you, they know, they feel your power anyway. You understand? Yes. They know what they can and can't do. Omar has a question he feels most people will be wanting to know. But will Jamil be comfortable answering? Okay, so Jamil, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. I don't know, everybody has needs and woman has needs and yeah. some of their main concerns may mm -hmm. be their needs. Mm -hmm. So... Do you get these questions a lot online? Yes, I do. I mean, the first question you'll get is, in a roundabout way, is can you have a family? Mm. You know, and obviously that means one thing, that is the physical needs of another person. That's right. And mashallah, I'm blessed with that. You know, I, I'm on this side to look for the whole thing, the physical needs, the, 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 the emotional needs, yes. you know, everything. So even though like my outer shell, my yes. arms, I have no legs, that has no bearings on me being able to give my future wife a full married life, and that includes the physical side. See, now that is amazing, because you just cleared everything up for everybody yeah. out there. Yeah. All of the women that's going to be the number yeah. one concern, Jamil, yeah. and now they can just erase that out of their mind, because yeah. you're a beautiful person, oh, beautiful you. personality. You're looking forward to being married. You're looking forward to pleasing your wife and satisfying her needs, and you're looking forward to having children. Inshallah. Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. This is a beautiful guy. I think everybody needs to know this, so let's put let's put it out there, Jamil. Let's put it out, man. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make this happen. ASAP. I'm not sure what qualities I want in my husband. Um, I suppose someone who's sweet, has a nice dress sense, and is sociable. I think you've just described a box of quality streets. Find your perfect partner. SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle. I so need to lose weight. My mom's cooking is sick. Well, if we hit it off, you will lose weight because I don't cook. Find your perfect partner. SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle.
I was pretty proud to be honest because there's not, you know, not many people that can actually say they've captained one of the England teams. So I was, I was pretty chuffed that he was one of my friends. Um, I was a, quite a bit shocked because he did keep it a bit to himself at the beginning, but then when he told us, we were like, all oh, right, that's well good. For me personally, it means everything to me because as a young boy, I always wanted to play football. Power chair football is like any other sport. It's competitive, it's, it's powerful as in, in this name. Um, it's very creative. The people from outside looking in can turn around and say, yes, this is, you know, people are taking this serious. They are meaning, you know, to take the sport further and make it bigger and bigger in the future and attract more people to the game. There is just general sort of maybe a bit of discrimination in society because of his disabilities, but as far as I know, I mean, even though he's been living on his own for many years, um, he's still like quite self-reliant and totally independent. And if he was going to be looking for a potential partner, I mean, he'd, I'd say partner because really that's what is, would probably suit him more. He needs like a life partner with him. And I can probably vouch for that. As a friend to me, he'd probably treat that life partner with you know, just as much Sort of friendship and love and do his very best to make them really happy. I don't think disabilities should come into the picture then because I think after you get to know someone then you just bypass them. They become like a byproduct. You, you, the disability doesn't really exist if you know what I mean. When I went on this marriage thing in the masjid it was, when I spoke to somebody, the first thing he said to me, without making any conversation, any effort, he said to me, um, sister, I don't pray. And okay. like it was like an immediate, um, sure. I don't fit your criteria or I'm, sure. I'm not like you or I'm not like what you're looking for. Syra has travelled to Manchester to meet online matchmaker Adeem. It's difficult these days, it genuinely is difficult. It's not, sometimes you'll find somebody, a brother or a sister, great personality, educated, good looking, everything. Mm, but mm. they can't, there's still difficulty in that. And I've got lots of friends who are mm. practicing, not at such a high level, but you know, the good looking girls, the nice girls, the decent girls, they've got everything, the educated, good jobs, everything. Uh, yet they, they're having the same problem. Mm. So it's not just me, it's a whole, whole mm. community of, of people that are mm. finding it difficult. Syra feels she has to lower her standards in order to find someone righteous. I don't expect um, you know, okay. Brad Pitt to come along. Why not? I mean, is that, is that something you just, you, you're not looking for that? Is that something out, out of the way or is it? Uh, no, no, it's not that I'm not looking for it. It's yeah. because your expectations, you have to be realistic. And obviously with practicing people, there's a, another little barrier that you have to kind of come or go you know go over and so that makes it so sometimes it's better to lower your expectations mm. then you're not let down or then you're open to considering more mm. rather than having high. Adeem doesn't agree and is quietly offended. But when you said because you're looking for somebody practicing that must mean that you're looking for somebody who's a bit lesser than the norm. It sounds like you're lowering your standards though and it sounds like you're lowering yourself because you're saying you know, I'm looking for somebody who's lesser because I'm a Muslim or I'm practicing Muslim. And I, and I think you should just, you know, I think that's a, that's a hang up that it sounds like you have. And I think if you just put that to one side and look, I'm, I'm proud of being a, a Muslim and actually representing Muslims and being a Muslim and showing what Muslim is. Okay. And I think that adds value to people's lives. And I think, in the, you know, if and when you do kind of pray your five prayers, it, it, you become a more stable person, you make, become a more kind of reflective person. That, that's kind of patronising to me because, yeah, I pray, what, you know, why do you keep going on about that? Yeah. You know, <laughs> let's move on to something a bit more. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, something it's, else, talk yeah, about yeah, something let's else. So you, you have to have a connection between two human beings. That, that, that prayer is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that's the connection there. You know, what's your connection with your, with your, with your life partner going to be? Because what you're saying is like everybody, you know, it's anybody who's yes. praying five pray prayers. So what is that? There's, there's something that's not gelling. There's that connection that's not happening. And I think that connection maybe mm. from the short meeting that we've had, I think you may, be, you may be putting people off by just being 
to kind of bang, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah. Praying, 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 praying. You know, being a Muslim is more than having a beard. Being a Muslim is is, is more than more than praying. And I think when you when you approach somebody, if you if you if you if you come across as a bit more colourful as well as a as a human, as as an individual, then that's an attraction. You know, um, I think that you know you, you you take it as as a given that you're you you have to practice. And what is it more that you can have off that individual? And maybe that's the attraction that the other person is looking for as well. Okay, this this is Saida. Eh? Yep, she's she's Muslim. She's practicing. No problem. Let's put that to one side now. Let's find out about what, who is Saida. And if you're and if you're telling them who you are as well, you know, it's a lifelong commitment. In it fact, is, as Muslims, yeah. we believe that it's a it's an eternal commitment. Mm. So for for me, it's just giving you know, being a bit, being, being a bit more than just practicing Muslim in your search criteria. Will Saira's one-dimensional search criteria help secure the right future partner? When I say I want somebody practicing, I, I mean the basic things um, like praying, fasting. Everybody does that. Most Muslims should yeah, really yeah, be doing yeah, that yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I want somebody who's just going to be, be a scholar and just, you know, read books to me all day. I'm not saying that um, because I know, you know, alhamdulillah, I think I know a little bit about the deen anyway. Yeah, yeah. But he needs to know his priorities, like if he's at work and it's time to pray, yeah. then it doesn't matter what he's working or where he's working at mm. or however busy he is, mm. he should pray. And that's yeah, what yeah. I do. That's what yeah, I do. Yeah. I've had obstacles with work and praying and, sure. you know, issues like them. And that's what I mean sure. with sure. practicing. Yeah. But that's not my personality. You know, my personality, if you like, you, what's your hobbies, what's your interests, what's your loves, what's your passion? What do you really want to do? What, what you know? You can still watch television. You can still, you know, you can still do activities together. What you know? Mm. Put a bit more emphasis on that. Yeah. What is it that you want to do as a pastime? Okay, you pray, but that's 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 a few minutes in the day. But what else do you want to do? What else? What what else is the compatibility? What else is there that side is looking for? I've I've looked for. Of course, the dunya is important. You know, looking at me, you wouldn't think I'm you know a qualified makeup hair and henna artist, would you? You'd immediately think that okay, she's practicing or. Whatever, but I, I have that and I understand that and you know, that's a side hobby that I do. Sure. Um, I, I, I go to the gym, I do lots of fitness classes, you know, I go out with my friends, I have a good time, I go on Islamic courses when I can as well. So it's not just that I sit down and I pray and that's it. Just because you're a Muslim doesn't mean that you can't do all the rest of the things that all the, you know, you can still in, in, enjoy and you can still, you know, definitely live a full and if not a fuller life. So I have considered somebody in the past who, who basically just prayed okay. and he was modelling at the same time but he had his five prayers, he didn't have a beard, uh, he didn't come from a practising family. The thing that I liked about him was that even though he was in this career and he's saying he wants to leave that and he wants to better himself so therefore we've got something in common. So he said he wanted to change so I said okay then, now you prove that to me. So I said to him, okay, um, there's um, a weekend seminar coming up. I'm going to be going to that. And why don't you come along kind of thing? So, and he had like two months notice and he didn't work on the weekends. He was completely free, had nothing to do. Um, and then he just, he just pulled out last minute and he made up some sort of an excuse. And I thought, okay, um, obviously he, he's, he's just saying he wants to change yeah. and giving me the impression he wants to, but he's not really doing it because his dad said, get married to a practicing girl, he's doing it for that mm. and not really doesn't understand why he, he, mm. he should be doing them things mm. anyway. Um, then, I, then I was patient with him and I thought, okay then, there's another one coming up, you missed that one, there's mm. another one coming up on the weekend and, he, and that was half the price of the other one and if he was willing to go, I would have paid for him. Mm. You know, it wasn't about 30 quid or 60 quid, but he didn't make any attempt mm. And then when I would try to help him or, you know, anything like that, he, he would just backlash it and be like, uh, no, don't tell me what to do. Mm. And then I'm like, wait a minute, you, you said you wanted to change. Yeah. You said you want to go and live in Saudi Arabia. And um, I'm, I'm trying to look into that. I'm giving you a chance here. So you have to prove that I'm not going to just tie the knot with you because you say you want to change. Actions speak louder than words. Mm. So um, obviously, Qadarullah, that didn't progress. And then I said no to him politely. I said, I don't think we're going to be. Is she willing to take on Adeem's much needed advice and move forward? But in the sense of meeting somebody with not a beard or meeting somebody who's, you know, who's not practicing or who's practicing or who's maybe, you know, in this environment or that environment, I think you just got to, 
just be a bit more kind of broader in your search criteria as well. I dreamt I was honeymooning in Dubai and it was amazing. Alhamdulillah. Could you dream about honeymooning in Manchester instead? Find your perfect partner. Singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Half My Faith or My Struggle.